doesn't hear my voice. And I am really excited about this because, you know, this is my thing. You know, for all those years, uh, you know, I, I've been invested in merging fields. And uh, as an undergraduate at NYU, started in 76, and I did um, a lot of work in those beginning years. First of all, I got into uh, massage therapy through my father, actually. He was doing it as a sort of profession in, in retirement. And I got into understanding the connection of the body and mind through that work. Um, I uh, only followed a few steps in, in a couple of my father's footsteps and then went off and into uh, bioenergetics. How many people know about bioenergetics and uh, right. Reichian work? Okay, so Reichian work, I studied Reichian work and bioenergetics and got into this understanding of the body-mind right off the bat, which is, you know, just, uh, you know, how things happen. There was a guy in my massage class and I had to go to get a license in 77. And he actually had been bioenergetics trained. So we actually started working out together and learned about this. And it led me to um, do a, a you know final paper, you know, whatever senior project thing. It was under school. Um, although I took a lot of grad courses, you know, with uh, was, uh, talking about Gestalt today. That's where I got into the Gestalt work in that, in that grad course. But I did a, um, a paper on psychosomatic medicine. That was my focus. I really was invested in you know bringing these two worlds together. I I, I discovered through that work. And that uh, research, I think I will turn this off now. Are you being upstaged by Bach? <laughs> oh, that was supposed to sound. Um, you know, so I, I really got invested in understanding that the body and mind are not separable. Okay? It's, uh, it's just one and the same in, in terms of function. What is the mind? Where is the mind? Are you out of your mind or are you out of your body? Consider that. Are you out of your mind? out of your body, you're out of touch, you're out of touch with reality, you're out of touch with other people, okay? And so, in studying this, I, you know, I, I came in, I sort of, by happenstance, came into this and realized that there's no way I could stop working with the body. I started to see things that I, you know, would not be privy to just by talking to people, by seeing their body and seeing their reactions and seeing body types and doing massage, I was really just seeing people without their clothes on, basically, too, and seeing how that affected their whole psyche. Um, so that, coupled with all the theory, it just made me realize that I have to do something to bring these worlds together. Um, so, uh, I have to make that long story, I can't make that long story too short, because it really ties in today to what's happening here. Um, Psychosomatic medicine was really something that was getting very popular in the 50s at that time, um, and it just uh, sort of went out of vogue with uh, Thorazine in, in a big way in the mental hospitals. Um, but they were looking at the aspects back then of the mind and how the mind affects the body and how the body affects the mind. This is something that we're all getting plenty of reference to, but maybe some people, we're not getting enough deep information about it. So my work is to really bring this together. And, you know, I've, I've gone very deep into it. And as you hear about it, and you can read about it through Cheryl's book, or Cheryl, not the right book. Cheryl Delio and, and Joanne Lowy edited the book out there on pediatric pain. And mine's the first chapter in that book. So it talks about a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today, okay? how I utilize music to effectively reduce or eliminate the sense of pain. There are a lot of definitions about pain, and so I guess I have to qualify that statement, what that means. In my uh, terminology, you know, pain is strong sensation that then leads to other reactions. And we have suffering and other People have already done this part of the lecture for me, so I'm really scared of having to go into some detail here. Um, but you have a good sense now of some of the differences between just, you know, we talk about nociception, we talk about neurological pain, different aspects, different kinds of pain, chronic pain, acute pain, pain that comes and goes, pain that's constant. Right? 
And has everybody had the experience of pain in their lives? <laughs> we all on this together? Yes, just a little bit maybe? A little bit of pain? That makes you human. And they're the doctors. Ah. <laughs> what a concept, you know. Let's get them started. This is why. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the Jewish tradition, um, I'm, I'm sort of half Jewish um, because I got I married a Jew. And basically, uh, in the ceremony we did, um, uh, you know, that, that when they break the light bulb, a lot of people think it's a wine glass. They just use a light bulb wrapped up these days. It makes a big pop sound. <laughs> um, you know, the, the concept behind that? How many people know the concept behind that? Anybody? Mm-hmm. Yes? Must be a good Jewish. Behind what? The breaking of the glass oh. or the wedding. It's like, yeah. The destruction of the temple. Yeah, but that's, yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, you're getting really too difficult. Well, I'm yeah. sorry, my daughter's in the face. No, you're, you're talking about the, you're, 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 you're talking about the original event. So to, yeah, and to generalize that or summarize that, what it is is that there's something Between that the joy the we're going to get this over. With, yeah, we're going to get this over with now. Maybe this may this be the worst of your problems. They always say like that. Maybe this may this be the worst. Of your problems. Um, you know, because they recognize in the you know marriage you're going to have some hard times and it's going to really you know have to go through that. So get over with now. Um, all right, I'm glad I got that out of the way. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about how I can help you. <laughs> I actually wrote that down <laughs> because sitting in these lectures, um, which I'm probably much more interested than most of you in what's being talked about in the medical stuff like that, when it's really nitty gritty, because uh, it's, it's really dense and it's really hard to absorb. But I don't come to a lot of these things, you know, and or I don't work in a hospital, so I'm not really having to deal with that all the time. I'm in private practice and I work with doctors and other professionals and whatever, but I'm, you know, not having to deal with the day in, day out, uh, all the kinds of, um, you know, things that are coming on. On the other hand, I used to study and teach anatomy and physiology. You know, this is like something that I'm really invested in. And uh, I took my massage training and went much further and learned all about all kinds of things in terms of the body. So that stuff really interests me. I hope you all weren't that bored. But my interest in, in, in this presentation is to bring it into focus as some practical reality that has to do with music, okay? And that's where my introduction here before I was introduced comes into play. What I was asking you to do effectively is what I want to actually maybe even teach if you haven't done this before uh, in this session here. I'd like you to actually come away with some, uh, you know, learning or have some impact on how this works. And the reason why I know it works, and the reason why I know it has a profound effect and power, um, is because I know that personally, on one hand. I know it in my practice. Most any of my clients over 30 years have been practicing, uh, we've all dealt with pain in some way, to some degree. It's all some kind of pain anyway. But the physical pain is a specialty, so I've dealt with a lot of that. But I'm, I'm going to share a lot of my personal work on the subject here, okay? Um, as we'll see in that in Cheryl's book out there, act of dental <laughs> medication or meditation? Accidental, no, I mean acts of dental, accidental, acts of dental, all right, you get it. <laughs> Play on words, this is how I learned about this approach to pain, by my uh, acts of dental medication, okay, medical uh, dentistry thing, combined with my transcendental meditation. Okay, and when I first got into transcendental med- med- meditation, my, my brother said, well, he was going to be a dentist actually, um, and he said, what are you doing? Acts of dental medication? What is that? <laughs> he, that was his joke. Accidental meditation. Okay, and I was 17, and I got into meditating during TM. And from there, I learned this way of dealing with, uh, you know, I guess it was my first sort of molar extraction. Um, so having dental work, I 
realize that, you know, I don't need medication uh, if I try this medication. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a big area, a loaded thing here, because it takes a lot of training. Obviously, you know, you gotta learn how to do that. But what I've come to is how we can use music to facilitate that process of letting go of pain, relaxing. Really, really relaxing deep into your body and feeling what's going on, not numbing. Not numbing out, not blocking out sensation, but actually moving with it. Actually gestalting, going with the resistance, as we say. You go with the resistance, Someone says no, and you say, okay, no, why? No, 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 what way? No, no, where? Where are you going? Following that lead, following that direction, following that impetus, following the first note that leads to the next, that's it. That's the now. That's the present, and that's what your stall is all about. I have a bunch of boring um, slides to show you, so I kind of want to get into that a little bit. And... Um, and then, I'll do some old school stuff here, real quick. Okay, these, these are, this is paper, <laughs> nice paper. <laughs> they stay up, they're lovely. Techno <laughs> support. <laughs> uh, this is really kind of weird, but I don't know. Anyway, um, and then live demonstration. And we're going to have stuff right up for some musicians and a, a senior figure student. So um, let me just go through a couple slides because I'm, I'm very like happy to skip over a lot of stuff, but I, I, I don't want to lose lose the poignant points. Um, I'll start with the ending though here since uh, I see Dory and this is really helpful. Dory was uh, her presentation had to spell just really brought out you know the theme here. Okay, so we'll start with the theme and. She has the facts and figures and the studies to, to back up this statement. But to summarize, basically, uh, what she said at the end there is music uh, really alleviates the fear, alleviates fear, as it, it uh, links up and, and occupies a part of the brain that has to do with anticipatory function. Okay? The anticipation of something, something bad, scary, dangerous. What do we call that emotion? Everybody? Fear. Fear. It's just simple, right? That's what fear is, as an emotion. Fear is called fear, but there's, you know, it's all this thought matter that gets into our body and makes us start to feel tight and anxious, you know, and it's a state. It's not an emotion. It's a state in the body. So as that's happening, it has to do with some anticipatory function in your brain. Music is there and taking up that space and occupying that function in your brain. Guess what? Have no fear. Music is here. Okay. Right here, now, present. The next note, the next note, the next note. Okay. Um, I know that's a mouthful, so we'll be, that's why I said it's a theme. I'm going to go back and try to work that out for you so you get that really clear. But by focusing on the music <coughs> in the present, here and now. Okay? As you hear it, as it comes in, and making that your preference or focus, you can begin to alleviate pain by letting go of distracting elements such as tension in your body. Tension is competing for your attention. My famous line, tension needs attention. Okay? It's like a massage therapy line. Painfully so, right? It's a painful reminder sometimes that something is <coughs> going on, and if you don't attend to it, guess what? Yeah, what happens? Nothing, right? It keeps going. <laughs> or, or the kid is screaming, you know, and you know, I, 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 you know, if you don't respond, they eventually start doing something like, you know, it's like, mommy, mommy, help me, I'm drowning, the bathtub is filling up, mommy, mommy, mommy. Thank you.
experienced my struggle, <coughs> my very painful struggle with uh, PowerPoint. So, original title, Finding Peace Through Pain, because uh, was, uh, my mother wrote a book called Finding Peace Through Pain. And uh, I am just incorporating music in that picture. Uh, yeah. Um, so we know these colloquial expressions. They do not come from nowhere. This one comes from either part of your body, pick your pick. Stress and pain. So it's an obvious purpose, but what can we do when pain is not something we really need to be aware of, and it functions only as a nuisance, or perhaps even something akin to torture? What can we do to alter the experience in order to nullify its noxious and unneeded effects or perhaps even better, to adopt, adapt his experience towards something positive, such as relaxation. Now, I don't, I had a dream about being very unpopular today. <laughs> I did, because I'm probably going to say some positive things about pain. <laughs> and um, uh, I don't want them to be taken the wrong way. I am not into pain, okay? I am not in favor of being in pain, and when I get my tooth drilled out, you know, the nerve in your tooth flies, drilled out, you just drill, and, and I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to music, and I'm relaxing, and the dentist is freaking out, and I have the video, which didn't work on my thing, so I can't show it to you, but there's other reasons I chose not to show it to you, but because it's kind of hard to watch somebody get this, that happen, but you probably can imagine the degree of sensation that goes through a person's body when that's happening. And I am telling you honestly, honestly, I'm not just doing this for a big show. It doesn't hurt me. It does not hurt me that I don't use any medication or uh, you know, any numbing whatsoever. And I've had this done about five times now. Unfortunately, I have some you know, dental stuff from before I was sick. And, you know, well, it just it doesn't hurt. I do the process. I relax, I come out, oh, that's wonderful. And I'm in, I was saying, this, um, of course it's an altered state, sorry, we just talking about Of course I go into an altered state, right? But I'm not, like, out of it. The dentist says, it's quieter, I say, <laughs> like, bring it on, doc, it's okay. You know, it's relaxing. And why? Because it's a very, very, very extremely active process for me mentally. To be listening to the pain really sensing it, and the moment it comes in, a very nanosecond, I am relieving it, I'm letting it go, I'm letting it go through my body actively, I'm releasing it. This is a technique, well, it's a practice, but it's a technique, right? And music is, makes it wonderful. I mean, without the music, it would just be boring, you know, and, and why am I doing this? But with the music, it's like, oh, I, I get an hour of break from my day, you know, I go back to my office, I'm not all oh, hot, hot, you know, totally numb like that, I can see the next line, it's not a problem. It's very, very fluid, it's very, very fun. Believe it or not, but I do have the video to prove it, so, you know, anyone's interested, I'll get you that. Um, okay, now I'm going to try to move faster. So, this is the paradox, welcome to paradox, increase awareness with regards to no perception can lessen the immediacy towards distracting or annihilating actions, such as I gotta get this thing numbed out, kill this pain, kill it, kill it. Um, can you have more about that? I'm better regulating awareness of the sensation to the background of a more rewarding experience such as music. You really it to the background consciously, conscientiously. You know, you don't you don't need it in the foreground. It's it's not a necessary message in this context. Caveman didn't have this context. We have it. We live today with these modern conveniences of medicine. We live in a world where you know you can get something fixed. Okay? The body doesn't have to seize up your leg completely if you, you know, broke it or whatever, and make it like just like this kind of stump that you carry around, you know. But we'll do that anyway. Okay, but it doesn't have to really just be doing that forever. You go to the doctor, you get upset, you get it fixed, you get a cast, the cast holds it together. And then. But the point is that you don't 
meaning what is primordially based, somebody said biological, you know, this is really where it comes from. It comes from, there's an ideology to it. There's a, there's a, a you know, it's a Darwin, excuse me if that offense, but it's Darwin. And we have to realize that these, th these mechanisms of our physical body are very based on early man. And just think about it, you know. When they didn't have the resource of, the, of medicine, the body had to take care of itself. It's just one way that we do it, by seizing up, the muscle seize up on both sides, you know, the joint, that kind of thing. If you're ever wondering, oh, I don't know, I fell on my shoulder, I can't move it. Whatever it is, it's both sides. We have antagonistic muscles. This one goes this way, and this one goes that way. Okay, and that's all they do, okay? In order for this to happen, this happens when this lets it happen, and vice versa. So they have to be coordinated. When they're not, we have trouble. This would be the answer to 99 or so, or maybe all like physical issues of the body, somatic tension issues, back, 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 that, you know, bad pains in the body. Generally, uh, it's really pretty diagnosable to the variation in the way the body is held. That gives an inequity in the, in the way that we're supported. Okay? We're out of balance on some subtle level of those areas. So killing pain is important sometimes, but not always, and there can be a, a great deal to learn from these imbalances in our life, like what's stressing you out in life. Take a look. It's painfully obvious for the most part. You know, when we're really running ourselves ragged, and we're going working on the clock, and we're socializing, and, you know, staying out late, and then you get up early, or you have kids, or whatever the deal is. There's so much that goes into the day and functioning and you know, helping in the day. You know, it's just hard to keep the balance. Life's a juggle. So, when things get out of balance, uh, you know, you, you maybe go see a therapist anytime. Right? Um, so, in Gestalt work, we do these experiments. And these experiments offer some insights as to how we can experiment with the shifting focus that can give us a sense of autonomy to regulate the perception of pain by addressing it as an emergent figure from our nervous system. An emergent figure from our nervous system. Everybody get that? An emergent figure, right, that's all, from our nervous system. Nervous system got something to say, boom. Sends a signal. You get it up here. Hey, where did it come from? It came from my eye, my ear, my nose, my mouth, my arm, my finger, my hurt and toe, whatever. That's where it came from, peripherally, we just said that. And it goes to the brain. It goes to your awareness, hopefully, in the brain. In the body. In the whole, which is this one. Okay? The whole figure. The whole shebang. The whole picture here consists of a figure and a ground. Okay, when you look at that picture, which everyone knows from my generation, seen it a million times, what do you see? What do you see in the picture? I'm sorry, it's like when you see that, I'm sorry, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We both, go, we, go, we all see the faces and the bays because we know the, the, the deal. In effect, in a brain sense, you don't, okay? In a brain sense, in, a, in an actual functioning level, you can't. Now, Fritz Perls, founder of this work, Gestalt Therapy, not Gestalt Psychology, which was the psychology of perception, you know, from the late uh, 19th century. Um, this is, that concept of perception is taken in therapy, but what he was aware of as a doctor is that um, we don't actually see both of those things at the same time. We might see both two faces at the same time because the two faces represent, in your mind, a figure of two faces. And then you go and you switch, oh, now I see the dot. And that's a new figure. So it's back and forth constantly, quickly. And, you know, so if you saw both those things within a nanosecond, so pretty much together, right? 
But once you've identified the two things, then isn't it kind of possible to hold both in your mind? Good you know? point, good point, yeah. So, so as soon as I see that, I see one figure, right? That's what you're saying. I don't see the faces in the, the, the vase anymore. No, I see the gestalt standard thing. You know? it, that's the, that is the figure right now. Good point, right? So see how she did that? Put it together. <laughs> that's what we're doing all the time. We're always creating new and sometimes more complex or sometimes more simple figures. I probably am going to do both right now. <laughs> all right, so some of these things are going to be more complex and these things, some things more simple. So, um, so it em emphasizes focusing on awareness of what is happening in the present moment, the uh, attention in one's physical processes, the breath, the sensations, movements, etc., is an essential part of the therapy process. Okay, you get that, right? Um, the primary focus of this work involves elimination of interruptions to clear, flowing, and graceful contact uh, with self, other, and the, or the environment. Now that is the, the key foundational thing is the New York Institute here, where it all started, way back when, uh, in uh, 1950, 51, 51, 52. The, um, these guys, the Pearls and Flux, started this New York Institute, and this is the foundation of it that we've come to today, I really appreciate it. It's all about contact. The operative word is contact, and then contact interruption. I don't say it's all about, but this is a major feature of our work is to really uh, try to emphasize this theori you know, theoretically, to talk about con contact, it, it offers us um, a, a, a really a great playing field here for encompassing lots of uh, things that are happening in psychotherapy world, uh, psychodynamic work is uh, really embracing what we've already, you know, what we've been dealing with and, and promoting for all these years. So it's kind of things are coming full circle. <coughs> uh, psychoanalytical people are being much more, you know, you don't get on the couch anymore, you know, everybody knows that, right? It's much more interpersonal and um, you know, subjective. Anyway, um, this is um, attending, yeah, constantly attending to the interaction between thought, sensation, and the client's process. That is really what it's all about. The constant attention to what's happening, what's coming up, what's happening now. Um, a little bit about trauma. Okay, so when pain is a result of trauma, uh, which you know, almost, is, almost always is, but with some exceptions, uh, the memory of the original occurrence or the ensuing pain pattern is coupled with an emotional mindset. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the from Peter Levine's work, the somatic experiencing, the idea of coupling something. And um, work, our work in, in trauma work, the work is to uncouple. Coupling like trains, right? Remember those little train tracks that on the track you used to play with? And they couple like that, they're hooking together. Okay, so the, the thing is that you have this experience of the trauma, maybe if you, you know, a car accident or whatever, and, um, you know, uh, a lot of emotions may be built in around it. Well, that trauma, that, that was traumatizing because I was on my way to my, um, you know, performance, uh, you know, concert pianist performance that I worked on for so many years, you know. Here it was at the end of the song. I thought I was going to do it, ah, and this car, you know, car came and swiped me, and I boom. This, so all of that, and then I, and that, that's why I never became a concert uh, talk to the park. It's not true, but that's I make that up. <laughs> okay, um, but that could be a very emotionally damaging thing, which just locks in and creates what's called fixed gestalts. Right? That's the gestalt term we talk about fixity. And the opposite of that, or the, the healthy polarity of that, is for things to be flowing and connected and moving constantly. The light, the reload. Okay. Follow the flow, follow the rhythm. So an interruption to that rhythm is usually trauma. So Again, rounding up, bringing awareness to the specific nature of the coupling, that's what I'm talking about, we can begin to unravel the often mysterious aspects of why pain persists. 
Uh, I like that we got a, 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 an answer from Dr. Carr a little bit about that. Um, you know, the, uh, the idea of the, the chronic pain and the, the you know, maybe uh, Native American, you know, Indian chief, anyone, elders, you know, going off into the woods and just, you know, going off with their, their chronic pain, you know, ready to die because they're not serving the function. Staying with chronic pain, you know, why does it persist? Well, you know, if you don't get over it, if you don't change your mind about it and you can just fix it, right? then you're stuck with it because basically in that, as Dr. Carr was saying, you know, it's, he believes that there's a, a Darwinian connection to it. We're talking about evolution of, you know, of, of the human species. If we just go wander, or any animal, if we will wander off, you know, because we're not of any use anymore, that made sense to the tribe. to bring that, to underscore that point, because I thought something about that a little bit more, and I feel that's an important point to make. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 uh, for somebody said it yesterday that there was not a clear why, reason why, um, important, not a clear reason why we have chronic pain. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it should be a memory. We should... Uh, I mean, not that pain is a good memory, but you know, we're going to probably remember it, and it'd be good to have it remembered in a way that is important and special. All right, so then we have all the therapy. So then with the secondary gain and uh, retroflexion. Uh, so secondary gain, everyone's familiar with that term. Um, uh, you know, retroflexion is, a, is one of the uh, gestalt terms that's used, one of the five terms that we use to describe these five different kinds of ways that uh, contact is interrupted. Okay? And again, I'll say this. Contact is either with yourself, your own being, uh, with other, or with the environment. Okay? Uh, so, retroflexion, putting up with the pain as a form of punishing or abusing uh, you know, it's taking something out on yourself that really should be, you know, gotten rid of. Um, we have to look at that. We have to examine that from a psychotherapy point of view. Um, you know, that's that's a big that could be a very big problem. It could be years. You know. People do spend you know uh, a long time trying to work out why they're beating up on themselves. Why are they doing that? Okay, but they may not be getting in there enough to make contact exactly how they're doing it. And if you don't really feel how you're doing it, how you're dealing with it, and uh, pain in your own neck, or your own body, or fibromyalgia, for instance, right? Running all over the place, you know, with that kind of symptoms, you know, and sensations. If you don't get a handle on that, you know, it can really hurt, right? It can be very disturbing. Chasing it all around. You know, you may be chasing after something, but not getting to the core and the root of it. So, in my work, this is something that gets uh, go for it. You know, we try to uncover those things. Okay. Uh, this is a reminder. It's all about mindfulness. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> mindfulness reminders. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a buzzword, so that's why I wrote it so big. Um, it's, it's not a buzzword, really. I mean, it's really profound and important contribution to our field, I feel, but, um, you know, it's just that it's, um, it's, um, it's like a no-brainer, it's a joke. Mindfulness is a no-brainer. Does that make any sense? Um, you have to be out of your mind to do mindfulness. <laughs> All right. So mindfulness is just really, like, about paying attention, okay, to what is and what's happening. And, uh, it's a lot more than that. It's a whole bunch of pursuit, but essentially it's, what I do in this work is what I'm trying to get to. So we'll get to it. Okay. And we got to get to it sooner. Uh, okay, music as a preferred sensation. All right, so does that make sense? We would prefer <coughs> music over most things, probably, us in the room, and certainly over pain. Uh, but you, you do, if you're working on music therapy, you really have to know 
uh, you know, how to choose the right music, okay? And that's not, so much, that's not the subject of today's this presentation. A little bit about that in the book out there. But um, what the focus is for me is to get music that is engaging. And so I'm gonna ha have, I'm gonna do a little demonstration in a few moments, which involves uh, this active listening to the music. All right. And again, this is uh, this is something uh, because my work is complicated, so it's, it goes into different realms. You know, sometimes I'm doing toning or singing bowls, like uh, you know, putting bowls in the body or doing body work. I have an uh, approach called elemental music alignment, but actually using the bass guitar table out there. That was uh, one of my uh, you know experiences early on, and then the, the Michael Bradford and that I created half of that anyway, and created the physical structure. I worked with him in the 80s and he had this discovery of uh, you know, how to work with the, um, put my work, which is involved music and massage work, movement, alignment, um, to, with music support. So I built a table like that. And it's, you know, I invite you all to come and check it out. Right? So in using uh, music, as a ground for what may come up, I may go into a gestalt process based on what happens in the music process. And because things, people get in touch with things when they're on a table like that and getting, hearing music of any kind. I use mostly, mostly classical, but a lot of modern music. I use a lot of uh, music that I wouldn't normally listen to, actually. I use a lot of, uh, you know, Steve Reich and John Adams. And, you know, numerous music has a really great effect on the body especially if you're doing body work with this. So that's another piece of the work. Um, but to bring it back into processing, gestalt, right? That's my focus, right? And the focus is, again, on what comes up, what emerges from that background of experience. Um, so choosing a mentally engaging music is hopefully what we're about to hear as it's employed to mitigate unnecessary emotional and cognitive responses. Uh, to strong sensations, allowing for an increased sense of the body and ability to simply relax in response to strong somatic stimuli as they dissipate peacefully. That's where you find the peace, okay? Because if you're really allowing these sensations to come up in the body, right, and be released as you focus on them, then you will find peace. I'm going to move fast now because I'm really looking into the back of my time. So let's move into what this looks like and do a little bit of it. And I invite you all to stretch your neck, as it were, uh, if you'd like. To stretch your neck, I think most people will find, you could even hang your hand over here like this if you want. But, you know, uh, and do this, you know, remember, after a little bit of doing this, you're going to want to go the other way. I want you to focus on the center of your sensation as you stretch your neck. I mean, some people don't even have to use your arms, you just turn it. What I want you to feel is a little bit of the tension and a little bit of the, the uh, strong sensation that comes up with the tension. You can do it this way. You, if that's uncomfortable, don't do it. Please turn your head left or right. Just the cardinal directions. Left, right, up, down, forward. Just find the place of tension that you want to work with. Actually, a little bit of moving around first is actually a good idea since so I'm doing that. So left, right, up, down. And then just focus for a moment on one little spot of tension. And um, I am going to remove the musical background. And as you focus, notice I'm not playing slow, relaxing music. But you can hear it as slow music, as it flows. Uh, like that, maybe? Or you can hear every note. You can break it down into cycles, you know, or parts so that it can suit you. You can adjust to it. It has a lot of variables. And as you focus on the music and the sensation, what I'd like you to do is to think about what exactly you feel. Just focus on, like, do one little stretch. And really focus on what you feel at the most extreme point. And look for one little tiny thread, like a bundle of fibers, such as a whisk broom, bundled together. You'll have maybe one little fiber in the middle that you're looking for. See if in your mind's eye, as you look for that one 
seminal fiber that speaks to you the loudest. Hear us. You find that experience combined with the music that's going on right now. Completely attending to like a breath, right? Raising and falling. Which you can also do to enhance your letting go experience. Breathing. Breathing. some pain? Did, were you able to alleviate it with the, this, this, this yeah. process? A little bit? Okay. <coughs> right, so you're getting it. Two days of sinning. What's that? Two days of sinning. The sinning. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Sinning. Yeah. What's that? Sinning. Not sinning. Not sinning. Oh, I thought you said sinning. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were like my friend being bad or something, you know. Like sinning. Sinning. Sitting is bad. <laughs> sitting is definitely a bad thing to do too much of. Uh, but sinning, as in, you know, staying out for four in the morning. <laughs> Somebody was asking me, what, do you have a cure for alcohol uh, enjoyment? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, so just to give you a little medical uh, background thing. Um, basically, not to go into that detail, but to give your, your patients, especially if you work in a hospital and normal people, or norm, like us, normal neurotics, like I work with, we're all normal neurotics, yeah? We just can talk this language and explain to people, you know, that it's a simple concept, right? So if you have uh, nerves that are hurting, uh, let's say you have a muscle, and a muscle's a bunch of fibers, literally, right? Um, but um, nerves are fibers, you know, just like these nerve fibers. So a bunch of nerves, and it's going to look like, a, you've seen pictures of nerves, it's all coagulant, and it's all, you know. So I don't want to make too much of a mess, but let's say we have, um, let's say we have a, um, you know, a pin prick or something like that, right? Um, and the pin is, well, first of all, around the pin is all these kind of, uh, you know, fibery things, right? These fingers. And they're all, you know, like, like this, right? Okay, this is like, um, maybe a big nerve here, okay? It has a lot of fingers. Okay? Ooh, that's lovely. Um, now, like that. And this is maybe not the clearest picture. I, I, I don't usually do it this way. I don't know. The, the idea that a bunch of fibers are going to the same general area, if you have a, a strong sensation, like a blow to the body or something, um, near, there's going to be some uh, neural center or neural area that starts to get affected, okay? And this part starts to send out a signal by the fact that there are nerves that are actually, we're actually touching this thing, okay? And just for a point of display, there is like, uh, how is it? So that's one nerve. Let's say one nerve and it has like a little branch to it like that. And that branch was touching it. But then there's this other nerve that was going through it like this. Because let's say this part of the nerve was bigger. And it was more than one thing, right? Okay. So what you want to do is understand the very basic concept here. And this is actually even more complicated than I usually express it, but it's, it's something to handle. Okay, so a bunch of nerves coming into this territory. Notice that if this was the site, like the pinprick would have, the 
other nerves, the nerves that aren't touching it, maybe don't have to get so involved. Okay, but they will be, because in general, you're going to, you know, a lot of times if it's a severe thing, very often it's a blow, you know, just to say or whatever, to your whole leg, I don't know, some kind of just, just from a work as a picture, just work on that. This idea, let's say it radiates out, the pain is radiating out because you're getting all you're getting uh, levels of involvement here. This is just levels of involvement. So what I'm doing with the brown here is nothing but uh, showing you the target area. So this is not an anatomical thing. The other ones are anatomical, the axial nerve, and that's an axial injury, something that came into the body. Could be just a blow, but this is a picture. This is a bullseye, right? And the bullseye there now involves a little bit of connection to some nerves, maybe. But maybe this nerve got really hit in the main branch of it, you know, so it's going to get this nerve even worse, right? Degrees, right? What if we just ignore all these other signals? Because basically they're not telling us anything we need to know. They're just sort of saying, hey, you know, there's this big alarm. You know, how many alarm fire was that? Oh, the five alarm. Well, how about just make it a three for the moment, maybe two, maybe one, okay? Let's see if we can parse out all this experience and go down to, well, even this one, let's just try to edit this one out because it's not as important as this one. So this is a concept, and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate in a moment on a live being. Yeah, wrap it up. All right, let's do this now. Let's, can we have a, so what we're gonna do here is uh, a little demonstration of, of how to, you know, of this with the music. I'm gonna ask Sonia to imagine the sensation that she's gonna feel, and I'm gonna produce the sensation, is that okay? Do you have any tension? <laughs> Making sure <coughs> the proper subject for the experiment. Um, an experiment just to just do it like an experiment, just to find out if this works, find out what works and how it works. Again, I know it can work, but you know we have to find a way that it works for her. Okay. Just a quick question: When you were talking about you can't, the mind can't read the whole thing. The mind can only think of one thing at the same time. So how do we? Good point. Um, like I said, you see the figure of the vase, and you see the figure of the faces. The vase, face, back and forth, right? Rapidly. It's like it's like looking at a movie. What's what's a, what's a movie? One frame after another, and you start to put it together. But I'm asking you to slow that down, and actually asking you to focus on both back and forth until you can just really appreciate, you know, the feeling of the music. And maybe you don't need that experience of the pain. You know, maybe you don't need it, but you need to attend to it, make sure it's okay, and it's not getting angry that you're not paying attention to it, <laughs> you know? It wants your attention. The whole focus, I mean, the whole point of pain, right, is to get your attention. So you do something about something. That's the premise of this, which I didn't get to, but anyway, it's on that. I, I hope I've made that point clear enough. Because you know? it's been made, I think. Maybe not clear. getting our attention, we want to give it our attention, and respond to it, and respond to it, in this case, with relaxation. So you are to be as relaxed as possible in order to, yeah, that's okay. I want you to breathe, I want you to sit back in your chair, I do, I want you to really feel as relaxed as possible. I have a license to touch, so <laughs> if you're okay, you know, you know I mean, that's real. I, I say that because that's important to say. Um, yeah, all right, so I'm, I'm asking them to play a kind of a, a busy classical piece. Like something with a good melody, and it's wonderful to have it live, but I could use a recording of, you know, so you, you have it? You have it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and I'm going to ask you to feel what I do, and, and do the 1 to 10 scale we all know, so I'm going to press on a point. She's got a lot of lovely knots, yes? Five minutes, we're out? One minute overture. Ready? Sure. Go. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. Coming in at the five. Okay. One more. No. Clash is six. Go ahead, guys.
down to like 3 or 2. I'm trying to maintain a steady pressure and going in deeper. One thing I did tell her to do is to make this a target, and, uh, and that's the other part of the, the biogenic part. Is like constantly go to the center, and in your mind, like make the center of the target, like see the concentric rings, and go into the center of the sensation. So it's a very simple thing to tell people to do. Just keep going into the center. The center becomes its own bullseye. Right? I mean, that becomes its own target, and then you go into the center of that. You get that picture? Mm -hmm. This is like a, one of those things on TV, the mm -hmm. micro thing going into the microscope, you know? Mm -hmm. So you keep making the bullseye into a target of itself, mm -hmm. and that keeps the mind actively pursuing something, like the music. You're doing that, and you're going from that figure to the music, back and forth, until you can just enjoy the music and relax. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do the bullseye thing anymore for myself. It's just, you know, it's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. yeah, Folks, thank you very much. Come to my other five lectures that I have on here now. <laughs> uh, there's, there's so much to do. I'm sorry I couldn't get it all in there. I, you know, I hope you got something from it.